I'm guessing the government will want to keep this quiet. Let's begin. Well, with the 2030 date fast approaching that new petrol and diesel cars can no longer be sold in the UK, quite a lot of stuff still actually needs to be sorted out, doesn't it? And, you know, fair enough, you may say that's ages away, and you'd be right, but they haven't exactly moved quickly so far, have they? And there's an extra sting in the tail, too, if this story from the sun is anything to go by. Well, did you know that I heard that if you click the subscribe button down there, it'll either give you an EV for free or a lifetime's worth of petrol. I know which one I'd prefer. The article says that banning the sale of petrol and diesel cars from 2030 could cost every household £14,700, a report says. The cliff edge date is a key part of the government's net zero move, but the switch over to electric vehicles would cost around £400 billion, draw from the environmental benefits of £76 billion. Analysts by the Centre of Economic and Business Research shows. Most costs will be faced by business initially, but others will hit families in lower profits and wages and higher taxation up till 2050. It claims, Fairfield UK founder Howard Cox said, our 1.7 million supporters call on Liz Truss to end the virtue signaling attempt to ban new diesel and petrol cars. Well, do you know what? I've got a feeling that that 2030 deadline will probably actually get pushed back to 2040, then 2045, and who knows, maybe 2050. Because whilst they may want to hit their tree-hugging and environmentally friendly target, actually what they're not thinking about is the current cost of living, and how much that may go up by by 2030, especially if the madman overseas is still carrying on with his mission. And actually, electric for EVs isn't exactly all that environmentally friendly from what I've heard, with a lot of fossil fuels being burnt to create the electric. As it currently stands, charging an electric car is much more of a pain in the bum compared to the five minutes it takes you at the very most to fill up a tank of petrol. So what I think would be much better for the consumer is if they just let people buy both for as long as they want. And I think what will probably happen is when the cost goes down of the EVs and hopefully the cost of electric goes down as well, more people may decide, well actually it's time for me to jump on the bandwagon rather than being forced to do it and what actually feels like quite a forced move because at the end of the day we do not live in China so they shouldn't tell us what we can and can't buy really in my opinion anyway the study shows that the biggest cost is buying a new electric vehicles which will be 188 billion pounds dearer than their petrol equivalents in total the value of the extra time drivers will spend waiting for charging vehicles rather than pumping in fuel is calculated at 47 billion pounds meanwhile public investment needed for charging points and electricity generation infrastructure is put at around £99 billion. Paul Biggs of the Alliance of British Drivers said the benefits are theoretical, while the costs to taxpayers and households are real. The government needs to think again. And the Department for Transport said this report has misleading claims on the cost to households and ignores the benefits of electric vehicles. Well, to be honest, it just makes me wonder just how misleading that report is. Probably not much, I'm guessing. It could even be along the same lines as one of those trusts' promises, which brings me on to this video where 74% of EV drivers actually hate this about EVs. And I can't say I blame them. Anyway, subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.